Okay, um, I've waited about two months for this laptop, so I'm just gonna open it because I'm gonna be careful with this. I'm usually not careful with pa with like packages and stuff. Get that open. So this is the Framework 13 AMD edition. I've waited a while for this. Uh, let's just have a look. Okay. This is nice. There's the bezel. There's the input cover. Oh my God, that looks amazing. Um, here is, I think the SSD and the RAM. Nope, that's just the RAM. Um, that's where the laptop charger would go, but I've not ordered a charger. Reason for that is I bought a MacBook charger because I just prefer them. Here's all my expansion cards. US. Mm. I hope nothing goes wrong today, but uh, I ordered more expansion cards than that. So let's just. Oh my god. Okay, I'm going to get to that later. Um, In the lid here, there is... Oh, there's, there's some stickers. Um, that's kind of cute. Um, I'm gonna put them on my keyboard for now. Okay, that's fine. This, I hope this has my other expansion garden because I ordered a lot more than three, six of them. So I'm just going to open this real quick. Okay, there is another expansion guard in there, but that that's the HDMI. I don't actually know what I've ordered. This is the awesome little pride, the, you've got like a little spudger, and then you've got your tool, which is like the only thing you need. Is that removable? Oh, it is. You've got Philips there. You got there, that's actually kind of small. This thing screwed over, fits perfectly in my hand. Quite insecure about that though. That is just sort of comes off. So. How many expansion cards? I've got three USB C's, two USB A, an Ethernet, HDMI, okay, whatever. One terabyte Western Digital SSD. There we are. That's C, that is kind of light. I can't read that, inverted, but that's the model number. Yeah, I went for the mo the powerful, the really powerful AMD one because I just thought if I'm going to spend this much on a laptop I might as well just get the best I can for now. This is just... Can you just please get out? There we go. That is really light. Let's get to opening this. See, there are instructions how to fit the keyboard and stuff. But I just don't think I need it, if I'm honest with you. I'm really hate installing laptop where I'm, but that's in. Yeah. SSD. Good, I'm glad it tells me where it goes because I just actually didn't see it on the board, the slot for it, because I'm probably blind. Um, that is a really small SSD. Okay, where's my screwdriver tool thing gone? Okay, it's behind the laptop. Nice. Oh, and it's magnetic. That's just a bonus. I've lost the SSD now. No, I, I see it. Just blends in. I've got the keyboard to do. That camera isn't A going to focus and B going to correct the exposure. Alright, let's do the bezel. I mean, 
This is a bit excessive packaging for bezel. I mean, but I can't complain though. If it's not bent, intact, and it's in one piece, I don't think I, I care less, if I'm honest with you. I think I maybe should have done the bezel before the keyboard, which is probably a good idea that I didn't screw it down. Right, anyway, um, let's just open up one of these USB thingies. I don't know, I'll do it after that, so. Done it the wrong way. That's much smaller than I expected. Cool. Go to here. Let's get out some more of these expansion cards. I have my Ethernet expansion card. That's just gonna come out the wrong way, isn't it? No, okay, fine. They are not as pretty as the other ones are, but you know, it is what it is, I suppose. And that clips in like that. So I want two USB-Cs, and then I'll have a USB-A on this side. Yeah, have to just drop it. And is that USB-A? It is USB-A. Is it 3.0? Yeah, it is. I can see the extra pins. And then I'll probably put the HDMI where the Ethernet is once I've done once I'm done with it. All right. <clears throat> um, I want my drive with Windows on it. I'm installing 10 because I'm just not ready to move on to 11 yet. Uh, how do I do this function? Nah, maybe I'll have to wait. All right. Whilst this is just finishing up, I'm that was a bit loud. Going to connect an Ethernet to my switch at the back. Plug in the Ethernet adapter. Again, that is really loud. Plug in my Ethernet adapter. The good old Acer, this thing is massive. Um, why, why is that not running at full two and a half gigs? Okay. So I've accidentally installed Windows 10 Enterprise on the laptop instead of 10, um, which explains why some things like the Ethernet is not working. So I'm just going to flash another USB disk and I've got an ISO ready to go. Now that I've actually flashed a version of Windows 10 and not Enterprise, uh, it's asking me for my license key, which I really can't be bothered to, to put in right now. And it's asking me which version I want to install, which is Windows 10 Home. It's currently 12.47 and the battery is dying. I am just finishing up copying all of my Adobe settings, all of my apps and stuff from the old PC. So far, I'm very happy with the performance of the framework. Um, I'm very happy with sort of the layout, the how light it is and how portable it is. I love the two and a half gig Ethernet. Um, it is just brilliant, and of course, all of the expansion cards that that come with the framework. Okay, so I've been daily driving the framework laptop for two weeks now, and I must say, I'm impressed with it. I love the expansion cards, even though some people say it's something that nobody asked for. But to me, it's super useful. I love how it has captive screws that make it so much easier to assemble, so you don't have to worry about losing a screw. And if somehow you do, it's got spare ones on the inside. It's great that it has a lip under the keyboard. 
It helps you get your fingernail under to remove it, but it made me think I was doing something so wrong for a while because I didn't know it was intentional. Everything is held together with magnets, the screen, the keyboard, the bezel, it's a nice touch. QR codes on the inside make it user friendly to order replacement parts or to put it together if you don't know what you're doing. It has a neat interior and when this processor is outdated in 5 years, I can take out the board and replace it with a new CPU when it comes out. The speakers sound really nice, I'd argue they're better than my iPhone 12 speakers. The laptop is incredibly portable, it's incredibly light and it has a nice feel in the hands. It's made with 50% recycled aluminium and the bezel snaps together nicely with magnet, although it took me nearly 20 minutes to put it on properly. I like how it comes apart easily, how the keyboard feels and the fact that it has a fingerprint reader with a backlit keyboard. If you really want to, you can make it like a MacBook with two USB-C's on both sides and use as many dongles as you want. Personally, I like to have a USB-C and a USB-A on both sides so I can charge it from either side and I can plug a USB in from either side too. Overall, I'm happy with the framework. 64GB of RAM and a TB SSD is my configuration. I've got the latest processor in this, the most powerful one I could get at the time of purchase. Now, the only thing I would say I dislike about this laptop is when you close the lid and you don't shut down your operating system, for me, Windows, it will die fairly quickly. Though the only workaround for this right now is just to turn your PC off every time you close your lid. So yeah, that wraps up sort of my overview and unboxing of the Framework 13. This video was not sponsored, I just thought I'd make a video about this because it's an interesting laptop. The fact that it's made to be repaired, upgraded and serviced by the user. The fact that you can order replacement parts directly from Framework and the fact that you can replace it yourself. The opposite from a MacBook to where if you break your screen, Apple will tell you to go fuck yourself and buy a new one. Which is why I went for the Framework, even though it's a bit expensive for what you're really getting. That wraps up this video and I might see you next one.